Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the limit comparison test. Um, so this test, uh, we need to know how to state it. So we got the limit comparison test. If we are given two different series, um, a sub, the sum of a sub n, the sum of b sub n, we know that a sub n and b sub n are both greater than zero. Um, then what we do is we calculate a limit. So if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n over b sub n, it actually doesn't matter, it could be b sub n over a sub n, but if the limit of one over the other um, is uh, positive and finite, then um, either both series converge or both series diverge. Um, so the key thing here is that uh, if you take that limit and you get a positive finite value, then they both do the same thing. So a lot of people find this confusing at first, um, but you have to remember that you're actually going to pick or maybe construct one of the series, and since you're picking or constructing the series, you actually know what it does. So you're going to know what one of them does, and then you're going to take the limit, you're going to get your value, and then you'll be able to draw your conclusion from that. So it's not really that hard. Uh, you just have to get used to picking or constructing the series. So let's take a look at an example. So we have the sum um, of n times n minus 3 all over n plus 2 times n cubed minus 4. All right, so when I look at this, I feel like um, it just kind of feels like a P-series where a bunch of weird things have been done. Um, so, for example, n minus 3, that probably should have just been n, but then somebody subtracted 3, and then n cubed minus 4 should have really just been n cubed, um, but we subtracted 4 for some reason. So what I'm going to do to kind of construct my own series is I'm just going to look at what it really should have been. So um, the first n that we have is, is fine. But then n minus 3, I would rather that just be n, so I'm going to say times n. And then over, um, n plus 2 also would be easier to work with if it was just n, so I'm going to make that n. And then n cubed minus 4, obviously I don't want to subtract 4, um, because n is going to be huge, so subtracting 4 from n cubed doesn't make a difference, um, so I'm just going to use n cubed. So if I look at this, this is the same as n squared over n to the 4th, and that I can simplify down to 1 over n squared. And that's good because now that's a p-series and I know what that does. So this series definitely converges because it's a p-series where p is equal to 2 and 2 is greater than 1. Okay, so I know that that converges, so now I'm going to do the limit. So the limit as n approaches infinity of, and so I take this series, well the nth term of this series, and I'm going to divide it by the nth term of the series that I constructed, and then this is going to be if you rearrange it, you multiply by the reciprocal. So we get this. Um, I'm going to kind of jump over how to actually take the limit here. What I would do is I would expand it, and then I would probably uh, use L'Hopital's rule, I guess. Um, so this limit, because essentially you just have n to the fourth with some extra stuff over n to the fourth with some extra stuff. So n to the fourth is, is the dominant term of the numerator and denominator, so it's really just the ratio of the coefficients. So we get 1, which um, is pretty obviously positive and finite. You actually get 1 frequently when you do this. So that's positive and finite, and so I can make my conclusion. So I will say, therefore, um, the series that I started with, which is this, is going to do the same thing as the series that I constructed, so it must converge. And that's by the limit comparison test. All right, so I'm going to do two more examples just so you can kind of see how we go through these. Um, and again, I'm going to kind of skip the taking the limit part, because that's not really the, the big deal with this test. Um, all right, so here we have the sum of n cubed plus 8n all over the square root of n to the seventh plus 2n squared plus 4. So this doesn't really look as much like a p-series, but to me this does feel like a p-series where a bunch of stuff just kind of got uh, added on to the dominant terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think really big, right? So n is going to infinity, so all I care about are the dominant terms. So that's going to lead me to the sum of, in the numerator, I have n cubed and I have 8n. If you're going to infinity, n cubed just dwarfs 8n, so you can basically ignore the 8n. So in the numerator, I'm really just thinking n cubed. In the denominator, the radical doesn't really screw anything up for me. It's just that I have radical, and then n to the seventh is so much bigger than everything else that I can just ignore the rest of it as I go to infinity. So I'm going to use this as my series to compare to, and let's see what this does. So go with rational exponent, then use some properties of exponents. So I get down to 1 over n to the 1 half. 
1 over n to the 1 half, I know what that does because it's a p-series. So this diverges, and I like to say why. p is 1 half, which is obviously less than 1, so it's divergent. Um, now I need to take the limit, so I'm just going to jump to where I wrote it down. So I have the limit of the nth term of the given series over the nth term of my constructed series, and now I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. A lot of people jump straight to the um, you know, nth term of the given uh, times the reciprocal of the nth term of what you figured out, because it's going to happen every single time, so you kind of might as well. And this, uh, if you think about it, in the numerator and the denominator, we actually have ended up with things that have uh, exactly the same power, so we can just do the ratio of the coefficients again. Um, so the numerator and the denominator have the same degree if we expand it out. That's actually what happens when you construct your series, if you've done it kind of correctly. Um, so this will give me, again, the, the ratio of the coefficients, which is 1 over 1. So 1, um, which again is positive and finite. And so now I can just write my conclusion. So I'm going to just pop it up on the screen. So therefore, the given series diverges by the limit comparison test. So you have to know what your series does. You have to be able to take the limit. Those are really the two things um, that, are, that are outright required here. So I'll do one more example. So here we have the sum of e to the n plus n all over e to the 2n minus n squared. So this one's a little different because this does not look like a p-series to me. But if you think just in terms of the uh, dominant term, or the dominant terms, I should say, in the numerator and denominator, uh, something shows up that does look very familiar. So we're going to compare this to, in the numerator, e to the n is way bigger than n, so I'm just going to deal with that. In the denominator, e to the 2n is really dominant, so over e to the 2n. This, it turns out, is the sum of 1 over e to the n, which you might prefer to write this way, the sum of 1 over e all to the n. And now you can see that it's actually a geometric series, and it's a convergent geometric series because the ratio is 1 over e, which is definitely less than 1. So now I have a convergent geometric series that I can um, limit compare with. So I'm going to do the thing I suggested in the previous problem. I'm going to jump right to multiplying by the reciprocal. So I have the limit then approach to infinity of, so the nth term of the given series times the reciprocal of the nth term of the series I constructed. And then this will give me, if I expand it, the limit is n approaches to infinity. So e to the 2n plus n e to the n over e to the 2n minus n squared. And you can see by kind of the dominant term argument, uh, you probably locutiles this a bunch of times um, if, if you don't like that. Uh, this limit will just be 1 which again, we've gotten every time. It doesn't always happen, but it happens an awful lot. So that's positive and finite, we know. Um, and therefore, we can conclude, since the one we constructed converges, the given series converges by limit comparison test. So that's really how you use it. So I just have a couple more things that I would say. Um, the first thing is that you're going to build the series that you use um, based on the dominant terms in the numerator and the denominator of the uh, given series. So um, that's kind of how you come about with your come up with your series. Um, you almost always end up with a p series or a geometric series, and those are the easiest ones to work with. So that's really nice for us. Um, on the other hand, sometimes you're going to actually need to do another test on the series that you constructed, which is annoying, um, and those are a little more complicated. But when that does happen, it's not so bad. You typically end up either using the integral test or a direct comparison test. Um, and that's it. So that's the limit comparison test, and I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.